John and Charles Eddy, considered the founding fathers of Alamogordo, established the community in 1898 as a base for their El Paso and Northeastern Railroad. The rail lines were built to bring the train along the west side of town. Alamogordo's economy revolved around the railroad and began to expand with logging. The community layout planned by John and Charles Eddy was visionary and innovative. The new little community boomed. Once the El Paso and Northeastern Railroad was organized by the Eddy brothers in Alamogordo in 1897, a large amount of lumber was needed for railroad ties. The Alamogordo Lumber Company began operations on October 5, 1899 along the west side of what was Pennsylvania Avenue. The new sawmill was capable of cutting 50,000 board feet of lumber per day. The sawmill supported the logging railroads of the Sacramento Mountains. Together, both brought great changes to Alamogordo. The operations transformed the area from a wild frontier to a highly organized industry promoting timber production, supporting ranching, and even catering to some early tourism. From 1899 to 1940, the sawmill saw the logging work convert from the steam trains and railroads to the first trucks hauling timber loads in just 40 years. During these early years, logging was done with hand saws, and horses and mules were used for hauling the heavy timber off the hillsides. Around 1902, the work of cutting and skidding the trees down the mountainside to the railroad spur was being done by a subcontractor, the New Mexico Tie and Timber Company. By late 1903, the company assets included 11 miles of logging railroad, four locomotives, a multitude of timber cars, employed 650 men and boasted 8 to 10 million board feet of lumber and stock. Occasionally, railroad equipment issues or weather problems resulted in a temporary shutdown of the mill. Still, the demand for timber required a constant effort to cut down enough logs which kept the mill going. Near the end of the decade, property claims and government conservation acts began to limit logging in some areas of the Sacramento Mountains. By 1912, the Alamogordo Lumber Company was no longer a viable company. The lawsuits had denied it access to its most useful timber for an extended time period, which resulted in the loss of assets and labor. In order to bring the situation back to normal, the owners of the mill were required to form a new company and continued the logging business in the area. The Eddy brothers, founding fathers of the community, faced a juncture at which the town could have easily shriveled up like so many other railroad room towns. As New Mexico attained statehood in 1912, Alamogordo's business community regrouped. The Eddy brothers initiated incorporation of the town, and they established a formal government. The community persevered, and the attitude that Alamogordo was here to stay prevailed. The railroad and sawmill implemented some modern changes, and a young Alamogordo was able to rebound. The Alamogordo sawmill had been purchased by the M.R. Prestridge Lumber Company, and timber-filled trains were once again heading down the hill to Prestridge's mill in Alamogordo. In February 1921, with milling resumed, a steady capacity of incoming timber and its processing slowly increased. By October, production reached 1 million board feet of lumber per month, with the railroad bringing 15 to 16 flat car loads down the mountain to the mill each day. Many successful years passed for the Prestridge's mill, and in January 1935, the mill provided almost 30 million board feet of lumber for creating a new line that became known as the Agua Chiquita Unit. About the same time, the company purchased timber rights on the Cloudcroft Reserve from the Southern Pacific Railroad Company. After the considerable controversy, a rail line was completed around the south and east sides of the village of Cloudcroft, and logging continued. Over the course of the next decade, logging restrictions in the forest began to limit the amount of timber coming to the mill. By 1947, the age of the Alamogordo Lumber Company and Prestridge's Mill had come to an end. The railroad yards, once busy with steam trains and full of timber, were still. The solid company buildings, a 40-room boarding house, and the offices are long since abandoned. The western side of Alamogordo was no longer bustling with the noise of trains hauling timber or the saws of the mill. After 1947, the mill was operated on a smaller scale and from the 1950s to the 1980s, Alamogordo's sawmill once again provided jobs for those wanting to work timber. 
For 30 more years, the mill was once again active, but on a smaller scale. Many people in Alamogordo still recall how the top of the smokestack often glowed into the evening, burning wood scraps and sawdust left over from processing. Today, the three-story lumber processing building stands as a reminder of the earliest industry in Alamogordo, and the solitary smokestack nearby remains a silent sentry. The yard is silent, and it is easy to imagine the ghosts of workers walking amongst the stacks of milled boards. One security guard is on duty to direct explorers away from the dilapidated buildings, or perhaps to protect the history of what remains. For more than a century, Alan Bogordo's lumber company and the sawmill enjoyed prosperity and brought with it a means to help a little town named after a cottonwood tree to grow into what it is today. One by one, the steam trains, the loggers, and the men that worked the once busy sawmill passed from the scene, leaving behind them only the shadows of ruins and fading memories of our own history.